tell about your neighbor who's not complying according to your mm -hmm. view to these regulations, then you should hand him over. So we are heading to a point where humanity is going to take the law into its own hands by permission of the state. Yeah. Fascinating. That's a prophetic event. Definitely. Here's the Croatia week, September 21, and it says Croatia heading towards work-free Sunday. Croatia is heading towards a work-free Sunday in the direction of half of UU EU countries where Sunday working in shops is restricted. Regulating and restricting Sunday working is also in line with the Directive of Work-Life Balance adopted by the European Parliament last year, which has to be incorporated into the national legislation of EU countries by 2022. So, uh, not only are they using it for climate change, mm -hmm. they've actually done the work already. It's in the legislation. Yes. And it is creeping <coughs> up, just as the spirit of prophecy said it would. Like a stealth plane. Exactly. And people are not seeing it. No. And they're saying... There's no image of the beast. There's no mark of the beast. There's no talk of the mark of the beast. It's everywhere. It's just so well disguised. Yes. We've seen the political side. We've seen the religious side. Mm. We've seen the Sunday. We've seen how it is being introduced into legislation, even by the EU. Mm -hmm. Now, the Pope talks about this brotherhood of humanity. Now, humanity is still pretty divided. Mm. So if humanity is going to go forward in brotherhood, then all the parties must come together. Yes. Then the Chinese must be on board, the Americans must be on board, there must be brotherhood and peace between all of them. Mm. And so the United Nations will also be involved, right? I think uh, they will play a very prominent, prominent role. Okay, so let's have a look what what the speeches are like at the United Nations and see how we can fit this all together. We will distribute a vaccine. We will defeat the virus. We will end the pandemic. And we will enter a new era of unprecedented prosperity, cooperation, and peace. As we pursue this bright future, we must hold accountable the nation which unleashed this plague onto the world, China. The Chinese government and the World Health Organization, which is virtually controlled by China, falsely declared that there was no evidence of human-to-human -human transmission. Later, they falsely said people without symptoms would not spread the disease. The United Nations must hold China accountable for their actions. By contrast, after I withdrew from the one-sided Paris Climate Accord, last year America reduced its carbon emissions by more than any country in the agreement. Those who attack America's exceptional environmental record while ignoring China's rampant pollution are not interested in the environment. They only want to punish America, and I will not stand for it. If the United Nations is to be an effective organization, it must focus on the real problems of the world. We intend to deliver more peace agreements shortly, and I have never been more optimistic for the future of the region. There is no blood in the sand. Those days are hopefully over. America is fulfilling our destiny as peacemaker, but it is peace through strength. We are stronger now than ever before. Our weapons are at an advanced level like we've never had before, like, frankly, we've never even thought of having before. And I only pray to God that we never have to use them. And I am proudly putting America first, just as you should be putting your countries first. That's okay. That's what you should be doing. I am supremely confident that next year, when we gather in person, we will be in the midst of one of the greatest years in our history and, frankly, hopefully, in the history of the world. We are therefore facing the choice between two different paths. One leads to enhancing multilateralism, 
the expression of renewed global shared responsibility and solidarity based on justice and achieving peace and unity for the human family, which is God's project for the world. The other option gives priority to self-sufficiency, to nationalism, protectionism, individualism and isolation. This option excludes the poorest, the most vulnerable. A new ethics entails being mindful of the need for all to commit to work together to close tax havens, to avoid tax evasion and money laundering that deprive society and also to highlight the importance of upholding justice and the common good over the interests of companies and the most powerful multinationals. We must be honest and admit that while some progress has been achieved, the international community has not truly been able to fulfill most of its promises from five years ago. And this leads me to reiterate that we must avoid every temptation to fall into a declarationist nominalism which would only assuage our consciences. The United Nations was established to bring countries together as a bridge between people. Let us use the UN to transform our current challenge into an opportunity so that together, once and for all, we can build the future we want. We are not a bargaining chip in US elections and domestic policy. Any US administration after the upcoming elections will have no choice but to surrender to the resilience of the Iranian nation. And for the world, today is the time to say no to bullying and arrogance. The era of dominance and hegemony is long over. Our nations and children deserve a better and safer world based on the rule of law. So that was the recent United Nations discussion. Yes, the three people that were speaking the President of the United States, the Pope of the Holy See, and then the Iranian President, just for the... For the sake of contrast. Yeah. Now, it's interesting, the way Donald Trump spoke was very much in line with biblical prophecy. That the second beast of Revelation chapter 13 will force the world. He said, no blood in the sand. So he doesn't want a war. But let me tell you that we have the means yes, to force you. With the military yes. right after that. Yeah. So that is very much in line with the biblical scenario. On the other side, you had the papacy saying, no, we're looking more for a, a socialist model and not this nationalist model. And we need a more inclusive model that everybody is incorporated in. And then you have the Iranian that says nobody's going to prescribe to us it's going to be uh, we that go our way and everybody will just have to fall in line with that and accept that well i've got news for them somehow that will be mixed together and they will form a unit and the whole world will eventually prescribe the mark of the beast mm. Now, the only way I can see it happening at the moment mm -hmm. is through the climate change ag agenda. Yes. Because that affects the United States with its philosophy, that affects China with its philosophy, mm -hmm. Iran with its philosophy, and the Holy See as the glue cementing them all together. Even Trump, who pulled out of the Paris Accord, mentioned here that although they pulled out, and then he goes on, on what they did to save carbon and all of this. That they're ahead of all the other countries. Yeah. 
Yes, so even they are running with the carbon agenda. So that's the United Nations. I believe they're going to play an important role. And even the Pope said that they, he wants them to play an, play an important, important role. role. And if you listen to most of the um, speeches that were given, I think 99, if not all of them, were mentioning the COVID and then also climate. Now, having given this background, we have to see how the religious component is going to mold the minds of humanity to really want to come onto the prophetic page mm. as it has been predicted. So we'll have to go into some of those yeah. issues. So Martin, you've cut together a video here which talks about the Supreme Court development at the moment and yes. the way in which the United States is moving. Remember that the Bible says there must be an image of the beast that will form. Church and state has to come together. And the Democrats, they under Schumer, are very concerned that religion will have no say in the matter. And uh, the young lady Cortez yes. is very concerned that her body is her domain and nobody else's domain. Tell us a little bit about this yeah, video. That, this video that's been cut together now just shows the difference or the different uh, views. The, you've got the uh, Democrats, the views of them. Then you've got Trump defending his view on why he chose Amy. And then we've got the Catholic side that... Um, Taylor, Dr. Taylor Marshall also giving their side on this um, nomination of Trump. So bottom line is, can we keep religion out of politics? No. Doesn't look like it, right? Mm. It's going to be in there. Let's just have a look. And, and, and again, it's an issue of North versus South. Yes. North being the religious pushing the Babylonian model, South being the secular model, right? Correct. Let's have a look. She said, my most fervent wish is that I will not be replaced by a new, until a new president is installed. We believe that. So did the American people. Today, a Reuters poll came out and said 62% of Americans agree with her. It's extraordinarily important that we understand the stakes of this vacancy. Our reproductive rights are on the line. Our labor rights are on the line. Our right to health care is on the line. Labor and union protections are on the line. Our climate is on the line. And we only need two more senators to say that they will abide by RBG's wish. Two have already said it, we need two more. And to Mitch McConnell, we need to tell him that he is playing with fire. We need to make sure that this vacancy is protected, that our election go continues, and that the American people have their say. Thank you very much. We have uh, noticed some comments made in the media about my incredibly qualified nominee, Amy. Uh, the New York Times said her religion is not consistent with American values. She's Catholic. It covers a lot of people. It's a very disgraceful thing to say. Some of the comedians, I don't think they're comedians because comedians are supposed to be funny. They're not funny, like, at all. They're nasty, they're mean, and they think they're funny. And uh, someday, hopefully it's in five years, but someday, when I'm not here, they're going to be off television because their ratings, which aren't very good anyway, but their ratings are going to go down like you've never seen before. Uh, that includes a lot of others also. In fact, I'm sort of waiting for the New York Times and the Washington Post, and ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, MS, DNC. I, I'm waiting for them to endorse me because if they don't, they're going to drop with a thud like, you know, it was supposed to have happened long ago. And then we won a race and uh, it was a great, uh, it was a great victory. And our, I think we've never had a more energized base. I don't think so. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. The rallies that we're having are incredible. We call them protests. 
Though on the religious situation with Amy, I thought we settled this uh, 60 years ago with the election of John F. Kennedy. But seriously, they're going after her Catholicism. I will stand with her, fight with her, and we will uh, make sure that these attacks stop because they're really — it's unprecedented. They're basically fighting a major religion in our country. This is incredible. Fighting any religion, fighting Catholicism is just uh, incredible that they can be doing it. I'm going to go ahead and say it. President Donald Trump just won the 2020 election. You do not realize how big the death of Justice Ginsburg is in this election. And if President Trump can successfully place Amy Coney Barrett into the Supreme Court, do you realize what's happening in the United States of America? Let me tell you, a lot of you are praying that rosary every day. You're on the team. This is the kind of stuff that we, small, finite humans, we can't understand what God has in plan. We have to pray and give it to God, and then he has a plan of how he's going to make things right in this world. Marriage is a sacrament. The Protestants were so wrong when the Protestants said marriage is not a sacrament. They screwed themselves over big time. And they screwed over Europe and they screwed over Western civilization. When Luther and Calvin and Cramner and all these, I can't say, all these guys said marriage is not a sacrament. Marriage belongs to the secular state and not to the church. That was bad. That was bad. Well, that's quite a mix, right? So you have the king of the south view, you have the king of the north view, and then you have the plain, unadulterated Catholic view. Mm -hmm. And they don't seem to agree one with another, do they? No. Be that as it may, mm -hmm. we're not going to go into the issue of whether marriage is a sacrament or whether it is not a sacrament. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church believes, of course, that a sacrament is something that adds to your salvation, right? So it is a means to mm -hmm. salvation. And there are various sacrifices. So certain things that you do determine your salvation. And Protestantism was quite right when it said nothing that you do adds to your salvation. Salvation is by faith in the atonement of Jesus Christ. That doesn't negate good works, it doesn't negate doing the right thing, but any ritual that you can perform or any, any uh, pilgrimage that you undertake cannot add to your salvation. Mm. So I don't think our Catholic friend understands that issue fully in terms of where Protestantism comes from. But uh, that's not the point here. No. The point is that the divide between Protestantism and Catholicism in terms of doctrine is as great as it ever was. Mm -hmm. And yet they're going to combine. Yes. Yet they're going to work together. In the past, presidents have warned against Catholicism. They've warned against the Jesuits. Preachers warned against Catholicism against Catholics. I have nothing against any Catholic, but against the doctrine, mm -hmm. which is a doctrine of salvation by what you do and by your works, rather than a doctrine of salvation where you rely on the atonement of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. right? So this, this union of Catholicism and Protestantism is predicted in the Bible. This union of Catholicism and Protestantism is predicted in the spirit of prophecy. And Donald Trump said, well, this is a major religion. Mm. It's part of the system. Isn't it interesting, I don't know if I'm putting you off course now, but how many, I mean, on the courts, the justices, most of them are Catholic. 
most of them are Catholic. We have a Catholic, uh, virtually a Catholic run Supreme Court. Yes. And if Amy is confirmed, it will be a complete takeover, as it were. It's also interesting to me that all these role players are all part of organizations within Catholicism. And we'll have to look at that. We'll look at that now. And there's just another side one that I want to mention that you also hear that Trump said that if these news agencies don't get to start endorsing him, they'll, they're going to have problems. They're going to have a problem. In <laughs> other words, he feels that he's king of the north approaches on a roll, right? Now, I'm very interested in all of these things happening. Now, here is an article in The Guardian which gives us a little bit more information. Amy Coney Barrett, Spotlight Falls on Secretive Catholic Group People of Praise. Hmm. Donald Trump's nomination of Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court to replace Ruth Bader Ginsburg has drawn attention to a secretive Catholic covenant community called People of Praise that counts Barrett as a member and faces claims of adhering to a highly authoritarian structure. It's almost like something that you would expect in Opus Dei, right? Mm. Where the authority of the church is absolute. And if you look at the, the people that Trump has nominated, they come from Knights of Columbus. Yes. They come from this, this covenant community. Uh, the Bible is very clear that Jesus says he did nothing in secret. Mm. What are all these secret societies doing? Mm -hmm. And why are all these people members of these secret societies? They think that they are doing humanity a service mm. by doing this. But uh, God never operated like that. What you see is what you got. You don't, yes. didn't have to work behind the scenes. Jesus said, I have done nothing, nothing in, secret. in secret. They write here, a lot of what goes on in people of praise is not that different than what goes on in a lot of right-wing or conservative Catholic circles, said Heidi Schlumpf, executive editor for National Catholic Reporter which reports on the church. Whether people of praise rises to the level of a cult, I'm not in a position to make that judgment. But there is a level of secrecy that was concerning. And there was a level of reports by people who left the organization of authoritarianism that is concerning as well. So some people are put off by this kind of activity. But this is exactly in line with how the Jesuits operate. Mm. They also are absolutely authoritarian. They have a general and they will obey him like yes. a corpse. Yeah. So this, this issue of obeying a human directive, a human guide, yes. a human coach, a human leader is not in the order of God. Mm. We have the Bible and we have the Holy Spirit as our guide, and we are to take our marching orders by our conscience mediated through the Holy Spirit and God. Yes. Now, many of them, as we said, were Jesuit trained. And with this authoritarian, authoritarian structure, whose authority mm. swings the scepter? Well, the church. The church, the papacy, mm. the papacy, the Holy See. They swing the scepter. So in other words, you have the position here where the church can swing the scepter politically, even through the Supreme Court. Yes, it's actually interesting, yeah. You have Kavanaugh on there, you have Amy on there, you have all the other Catholic yeah. uh, judges on the Supreme Court. So if ever there is a decision, and of course the great fear is that they will reverse Roe versus Wade, etc. But that's not my point. I'm not arguing about the people. I'm not talking about whether these people are nice people or not nice people. Mm. That's not the issue. The issue is, does the church, through its authoritarian structure, have 
access to the mind of these people That's, to yeah. influence them in a certain direction, yes or no? Yes, definitely. And in, like you said, now it's in the courts and it's also in the government because you've got the Secretary of State. You've got all these thinkers. All that of them are in it. The same. So this is a very, very serious issue. And the Bible tells us that the second beast will do the will of the first beast and implement its directives. Mm -hmm. And the structure is in, place. is in place. That's the prophetic picture that we're looking mm -hmm. at. The Business Insider tells us that historians and election experts warn Trump is behaving like Mussolini and despots that the US usually condemns. Now this is very interesting. <laughs> President Donald Trump is refusing to commit to a peaceful transfer of power, threatening to shatter a tradition that lies at the heart of the democratic process in the U.S. This is pure speculation. He mm. hasn't done anything of the sort as yet. They just think he's going to do it. Yeah, right? and, he, and it's because he, 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 when they asked him, will he go peacefully, or he, uh, he said, we'll have to see. We'll have so to now see, they, yeah. yeah. So the clearest parallel is that Mussolini was prime minister of a democratic coalition government from 1922 to 1925. And during that time, he slowly chipped away at democratic institutions, insulting the press, using violence against the left, joking that he would be in office for 20 years, establishing a militia and a legislative body, the Grand Council, loyal to him. So they're drawing parallels. I would like to draw another parallel. Mm -hmm. Mussolini is the one that was instrumental in the healing of the wound. Yes. The he gave the papacy back its political power and its political territory, an independent Vatican state. And that was a prediction in prophecy. I am wondering whether with this comparison they might be right in a certain a aspect, and we will see that in the future. Mm -hmm. Will Donald Trump be the one who gives the power back to the church mm -hmm. and acts on behalf of the church? Then he will be a Mussolini. But he wasn't the one who started it. Yeah. Ronald Reagan started it. Yes. Remember when we go back in history, the magical moment, Time magazine, and how Reagan and the Pope conspired to assist Poland's solidarity movement and hasten the demise of communism. And it was called the Holy Alliance. Mm. Well, you remember in a previous episode where, when Trump spoke at Poland and he mentioned that that when they got together and po and Pope Paul this John Paul II was there and this they they're pushing this they're agenda pushing right? this agenda now it's interesting that prior to Ronald Reagan there were attempts to create diplomatic uh, connections between the United States and the Holy See the name, of course, to me is a misnomer because there's only one who's holy and mm -hmm. that is God. But be that as it may, let's not go into that. They could never do it because the American public wouldn't allow it yeah. and the churches wouldn't allow it. There would be a huge outcry. How can Protestantism reach over the Gulf and grab the hind of Rome, right? Mm. And then Ronald Reagan unilaterally did it. The first president that was Catholic was JFK. Mm -hmm. And as Donald Trump said, I thought, I thought this issue was resolved since we elected JFK. Yeah. He totally ignored what Ronald Reagan did for a good reason. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to remind too many people, I think. So it started off there. And since that time, things have been changing. The Supreme Court has yeah. been changing. It is now Catholic run. Exactly, it was Protestant. It was Protestant before. And the mechanisms have been created to bring about the fulfillment mm. of prophecy. Wasn't the Supreme Court Protestant, then more secular, 
and then Catholic. Absolutely. So the king of the north actually took over now. He's taking over again. You're absolutely right. This is also very interesting. U.S. Attorney General Barr, militant secularists, co-opted separation of church and state to attack religious freedom. Now, we said church and state was going to come together. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not any brilliance on our part. This is biblical prophecy. Yep. And this is a prophetic movement. And there were people that said, there are, there's nothing on the horizon of that nature. No. But we see it all over. Now, the last few weeks have been so instrumental yes. that it's absolutely phenomenal. You cannot deal with all of this in, in one, one session. No. We're going to have to divide this into two Definitely. sessions. Because what happened at the, at the mall, yes. at the Washington Mall, is the cherry on top. It brings all of this together. together. And I would love to do it all in one session, but we won't be able to. Let's just finish, finish what Barr part. had to say, yes. and then we'll continue with what happened at the Washington Mall. Mm. This is really where prophecy is fulfilling before our very eyes. Yes. Now, U.S. Attorney General Barr, militant secularists, co-opted separation of church and state to attack religious freedom. So he's making the separation of church and state an enemy of the state. He says, yet Americans must know that separation of church and state does not mean and never did mean separation of religion and civics. As some of our preachers said previously in our previous programs, separation of church and state is from the devil. Yeah, it's demonic. It's demonic. The Catholic Church teaches that there is a distinction between church and state, but not a total separation. Mm -hmm. And remember that this man is a member of the Knights of Columbus. Columbus. And this... Another secret Catholic society that endeavors to put the papal power back into the position where it was in the Middle Ages. Correct. He said this for the National Catholic Prayer Breakfast. Pope Pius called it an error in his 1864 encyclical, the errors to hold that the church ought to be separated from the state and the state from the church. Dr. Taylor Marshall explained in 2015 video that properly, un properly understood there is a distinction between church and state where each governs according to its particular competence but not a strict separation. That is the Catholic model. That's what we spoke about in the last WhatsApp. Yes. That's the one that you, like you explained. That's the synthesis. That's where the synthesis is, where, the, where this is heading. You've got and the two extremes, but this is where it's going. And that is where they were, mm -hmm. and that's where they want to be. But they lost that position. So Hegelian dialectics, you create complete secularism. On the one hand, the Iranian model on the other hand, and then you get back to the synthesis. This is where they're going. And that is what the Bible predicts. They received a mortal wound. They lost that mm -hmm. capacity. That mortal wound will be restored. It was you had Mussolini. Yes, beginning to heal it. You had Ronald Reagan. And now you have President Trump. And they are healing the wound mm -hmm. in its totality. Distinction between this. The Catholic position has always been what Pope Gelasius described in the late 5th century as the doctrine of the two swords. And we discussed that mm -hmm. in quite some detail in a previous one. But this is what is happening right before our eyes. And these are not people that yeah. are sitting on the sidelines. This is not a, a, a religious person, say, oh, uh, well, uh, a preacher saying this. This is coming from the ge Attorney General of the United States. Coming from the Attorney General of the United States. Now let's listen to what he has to say. Yeah. That crucial link between religion and liberty, so well understood at the founding, is all too often forgotten today. 
In American public discourse, perhaps no concept is more misunderstood than the notion of separation of church and state. Militant secularists have long seized on that slogan as a facile justification for attempting to drive religion from the public square and to exclude religious people from bringing a religious perspective to bear on conversations about the common good. Yet, as events like this one remind us, separation of church and state does not mean, and never did mean, separation of religion and civics. As late as 1952, Justice William O. Douglas would write for a majority of the Supreme Court that we are a religious people whose institutions presuppose a supreme being. Alexis de Tocqueville, the keenest observer of the early American Republic, praised America's separation of church and state while extolling America's union of the spirit of religion and the spirit of liberty as the key to its success. And Tocqueville identified religion as perhaps the greatest bulwark against the descent into tyranny. What is also noteworthy is he, gave, he got a prestigious honorary award at the National Catholic Prayer Breakfast. And his speech clearly tells us what the thinking in the echelons of power mm. at the moment is. And he also, when criticizing the separation of church and state, says that the coming together is essential for religious liberty. Mm. Now, as we discussed before, religious liberty to a Protestant is something totally different to religious liberty for the Roman Catholic Church. Yeah. Religious liberty, by definition, for the Roman Catholic Church is liberty to serve the common good. Mm. And he mentioned the common good as well. Yes. And the common good is defined by Rome. Yes. So in other words, you may exercise your freedom of religion, worship according to mm -hmm. your style, as long as it doesn't contradict the common good. Yes. And this is where the crux of the matter lies. Yes. You can see this with this whole COVID situation. You've got your freedom, but when it comes to common good, sorry, you don't so have a freedom. You don't anymore. have your freedom. Yeah. Yes. 